Hallelujah. What a joy. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I welcome you, beloved of the Lord. We are on day 44 of a hundred, of a hundred and fifty days of Psalms. I do encourage you, beloved of the Lord, if you have come this far or if it's your first time here, by the grace of God, we are on a journey through the scriptures in 150 days of Psalms, daily reading through seven chapters of the Bible in what we call the Six Pack Plus. I also encourage you because every single time as we come to commence, we share in the communion. We share in the Lord's table. And if you are here, you are not born again, this is the first thing for you to do if you are joining in for the 150 days of Psalm. It's important for you to give your life to Jesus. And how do you do that? In the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I will be praying for you at the end of the broadcast, but also I want you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is no harm for me to do this altar call now and at the end. So I want you to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The new has come. The old is gone. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you have prayed that prayer, now you are ready for the journey, for you are born again. Hallelujah. We give glory to you, Lord. We give you praises. We honor you, Lord. We say you are the Father, we pray, rise up and help us, rescue us because of your unfailing love. Rise up, O oh Lord, rise up, rise up, our Father, rise up. Hallelujah. We want to share in the communion. This wonderful day, we are on Psalm 44, by the grace of God, helping us to come through in this midnight hour in South Pacific time. We want to thank God also for allowing us to be able to continue to call on the name of the Lord, and we are safe. We are on Psalm 44, but we always commence in sharing of the communion. The word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, 
He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for the cup. As we partake of this communion, we pray that God, by your grace and your power, indeed, we will proclaim your death until you come. We also pray that you minister to the souls of men and the people that are gathered, O oh God. Father, the Lord Jesus, you will move supernaturally and help your body, the church. So we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's partake of the bread together. of the cup. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. May you cause your word, Lord, just like a fire, just like your spirit within us to consume the powers of darkness. Father, we pray that our proclamation of your death, as we associate with it, that you will help us to meditate on the word of God, memorize the word of God, study the word of God, read the word of God, and hear the word of God. Oh, rise up, Lord. Hey, rise up. Psalm 44, verse 26 says, Rise up and help us, rescue us because of your unfailing love. I just hear this in the spirit. Rise up, rise up, be encouraged, get out of that place. Be lifted. Go to the next level. Rise up. Oh, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Lord, rise up and help us. Rise up, O oh Lord, and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Rescue us. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, my Lord, you are the one. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Oh Lord, we bask in your presence. We surrender to you, oh God. That you would rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Rise up. Rise up, Lord. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Because of your unfailing love, Lord, rise up, rise up. Psalm 44, rise up, 
rise up, rise up for the director of music of the sons of Korah, a masculine. We have heard with our ears, O oh God. Our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago, with your hand. You drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land. Nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face. You love them. You are my king and my God, who decrees the victories for Jacob. Through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boast. All day long and we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us. You are no longer going out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a patience, for a pittance, gaining nothing from their self. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The peoples shake their heads at us. Psalm 44 verse 15. My disgrace is before me all day long. And my face is covered with shame. At the towns of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy. Who is bent on revenge. All this happened to us. All this happened to us, verse 17. Though we had not forgotten you, we had not been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back. Our feet had not strayed from your path. But you crushed us and made us a hound of jackals and covered us with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our Lord or spread out, our hands to a foreign God would not have God discovered it. Since he knows the secrets of the heart, yet for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, O oh Lord, why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression? We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Verse 26. Rise up. Rise up and help us. Redeem us. Hey, hallelujah. Because of your unfailing love. I want you to come to this place and command and speak it into your situation that God is rising up to help you. God is rising up to help you. God is rising up, rising up in your matter, in your situation. You must put your confidence in Him that He is rising up. He's rising up. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, rise up. Oh, Lord, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Oh, Lord. And help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Oh, Lord. Rise up and help us. Rise, oh Lord, oh Lord. Rise up. Rise up, oh Lord, we pray. Hey, rise up. Rise up, my Lord. Rise up. This is you, Lord. Oh, God, we call to you, Lord. Rise. 
resolve in your matter, whatever your matter is. I want you to tell him, rise up and help us. Redeem us because of your unfailing love, because you are good to us, because you have been helping us. We pray, rise up, O oh God, and help us. Bwana inuka na utusaidie ah, kwa sababu ya upendo wako because of your love because of your love oh god rise up and help us rise up and help us oh god rise up oh lord 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 rise up rise up can help us Lord only you can rescue us from the schemes of the enemy only you can redeem us because of your unfailing love only you can deliver us only you can re only you can rescue us Lord only you can help us oh father father you are worthy to be praised we honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father. Thank you for your ever presence. You are not in a promotion. You are not in a programming. Lord, you are among us. When we show up, you rise up. Lord, we pray, rise up. Rise up. Rise up in this program. Rise up in this journey of 150 days of Psalms. Rise up, O oh God, over my business. Rise up over my family. Come on, tell the Lord these things. Tell Him, rise up and help us. Tell Him these things. Tell Him, rise up and help us. Hallelujah. It's the 10th day of February as we are recording this. And it's 1016 here in Kenya, Nairobi. Rise up, Lord. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for rescue, Lord. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, that the burdens are down. The burdens have been removed. Healing is our portion. Healing is your portion. Breakthrough is your portion. I decree upon you right now that the favor of God is your portion. God is not asleep. He has not rejected you. He is not asleep. He has not forgotten your misery or your oppression. Yes, even the psalmist came to a place where he told the Lord, Awake, O Lord! Why do you sleep? Rise yourself. Don't reject us forever. Psalm 44 verse 23. He continued to ask, Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and our oppression. 
the psalmist was in that place when he felt like he was on the ground he says you are brought down to the dust our bodies cling to the ground father thank you thank you for your rescue thank you lord that we are here in your presence thank you lord that you are moving among us lord you are helping us by your grace and your power the Lord, we are not just here ordinary. We are here extraordinary with your help. I want you to look at your Bible there. Psalm 44 verse 25. We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. We are in a place where unless you help us, Lord, we cannot be able to move. Hey, Ra is a bora kala maya taraya. Oh my father. Oh my God. I call you today. Ah. Hey. Hallelujah. Rise up. Rise up. I see the angels of the Lord moving into position to execute the verdict in the courts of heaven. Father, we thank you. Rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing, unfailing love. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Rise up. In your prayer closet, I want you to just tell the Lord, rise up. Rise up and help. <laughs> because of your unfailing love. Father, we honor you. We give you praise. We thank you. Thank you for helping us, Lord God. There is none who can compare to you. Proverbs chapter 3. That's where we are heading. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Proverbs. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. The word of the Lord. Proverbs 3 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring prosperity bring you prosperity verse 3 let love and faithfulness never leave you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart then verse 4 you will win favor and a good name in the sight of god and man trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring you health to your body and nourishment to your, to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will overflow with abundance. And your vats will brim over with new wine. Verse 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, a man who gains understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. By understanding, 
he set the heavens in place. Let me mention something about that verse. The heavens are a very clear and powerful place in the scriptures. The heavens declare the glory of God. And in the heavens, he set up by his understanding. That the heavens that you see, these are just the, 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 the second heaven. Just here where you see here, this is the sky. This one here, the firmament that God created here in the book of Genesis. These heavens are the understanding. They were made by the understanding of God. And in those heavens are courts. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 7 from verse 10, we read something about the courts of heaven. And let me bring this understanding because we are going to understand it so we can pray with knowledge and you know how to deal with matters when it comes to prayer. Daniel chapter 7 verse 10, it says this, and let me read from verse 9. It says, again as I looked, the thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his place. His clothing was as white as snow, the hair of his head was like white as wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing out of out, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. The courts of heaven, the courts exist in heaven. The courts were were seated and the books were open that as I looked thrones were set in place and the ancient of day took his place there is you know there are courts in heaven that when you are when you stand before the Lord you must know that you have an advocate and this advocate is our Lord Jesus Christ you need to relinquish all your power to the advocate Jesus Christ so that he will be able to now stand your course, become a faithful witness for you in Revelation 1.5, and then also go ahead and represent you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the heavens were set in place by the understanding of God, but there are some affairs on earth that need legislation in the realm of the spirit. I was talking to one of the uh, legislators here in Kenya, and I told him, you know, sir, one thing that you must know is that there are some legislations that must happen in the realm of the spirit. You will try them in parliament, they will not work. You will try them in the senate, they will not work. You will try them in the office of the president, they will not work. They, they will first have to happen where the understanding of God set up a court. And that's the courts of heaven. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the prayers that we've been making every day from since we started this book four, book three, book, book uh, two of Psalms. And we thank God that this knowledge, sharing this as we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we want to go on and read verse number 20. It says, by his knowledge, the deeps were divided and the clouds let down, let drop the dew. My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. That's why for me I never wear a chain because <laughs> I don't wear two things. I don't wear a hat. I don't wear a chain. Because I believe in the scriptures. It says that they will be an ornament to grace your neck. What is gracing your neck? Is it just a golden chain? <laughs> Which is just vanity because you cannot go anywhere with it. But preserve sound judgment and discernment. Let them be life for you. Let them be an ornament to grace your neck, my sister, my brother. Let there be sound judgment and discernment gracing your neck. When you are walking, walk tall. You have discernment, you have judgment around your neck. You have, you have discernment and you have, and you have just sound judgment around your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. Listen to you. If, listen to me, if at all you have issues with sleep, 
Sleep is a reward for you. You should, you should sleep and enjoy the sleep. <laughs> so this is the verse for the sleep. But don't sleep because we want you to get to the end of the six pack plus. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. This one I think we should put it in a bedroom. Eh? Post this verse in all the bedrooms in your house. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Put that scripture up and put it in your bedroom. Before you sleep, read it. You will sleep like a laborer, enjoying the sleep. Because God delights in the prosperity of his servant. In the book of Jeremiah 31 verse 26 is also another sleeping verse there that you need to have in your verses where you are posting in your bedroom, those kind of things. Especially if you have issues to sleep, please do not take pills for sleeping. It is not necessary. Because God has purpose to give you sleep free. Jeremiah 31, 26, it says, At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. Your sleep shall be pleasant. When the time comes for you to sleep, you shall have a sleep that is pleasant and that is quality. A sleep that you shall sleep like the one of a laborer. In Jeremiah 11, in uh, Job, Job, yes. Job 11 verse number 18. It says this. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take rest in safety. My brothers in Somalia and, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the whiskey company, down there in Merile, and the, and the sea company up there in Saku. These guys are all soldiers. But I want to tell you, my dear friends, that you will be secure even in war, even in a difficult place in Somalia, in a difficult place in Syria, in a difficult place in Afghanistan. This verse will stand with you. It says you will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take rest in safety. Job eleven eighteen, Powerful. That even in a difficult situation, you will look and you will find hope. You will be secure because there is hope. You will be secure because there is hope. Marsabit, you will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. That is the place you need to be in the Lord. Verse 25 says, have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from sleeping. Keep your foot from being snared. Verse 27, do not withhold good from those who deserve it. And when it is in your power to act, verse 28, do not say to your neighbor, come back later. I'll give it to you tomorrow when you have it with you now. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trust trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Proverbs 31, 31, uh, 3, 31. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man, but he takes the upright into his confidence. Verse 33. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers. But he gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor. But fools hold up to shame. Beloved, we go on to the book of Ecclesiastes 11. And that is where we are continuing to proclaim the word of the Lord. Do not forget Psalm 44 verse number 26 is it verse number 26 or where are we in verse number 26 yes rise up O god rise up and help us rescue us because of your unfailing love you must continue to tell the lord rise up and help us when you find yourself you don't have words to say just say rise up and help us lord 
Rise up and help us. When it is difficult to do anything, just say, rise up and help us. Because this is the place where we need to be. That the Lord is rising. He's helping us. He's helping us. Oh, Rakaya Bayatisa. Ah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. Ah, wonderful Lord. Wonderful Master. Rise up and rescue us. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up, oh Lord, and rescue us. Rise up and rescue us. Ecclesiastes. 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 Uh, 11 1 it says cast your bread upon the waters for after many days you will find it again give portions to seven yes to eight for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land if clouds are full of water they pour rain upon the earth whether a tree falls to the south or to the north in the place where it falls there it will lie whoever watches the wind will not blunt. Whoever looks at the clouds will not rip. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Ecclesiastes 11.5 puts you in a very safe place where you don't need to know everything. You just need to adore this God and love this God and dwell in Him. Because He belongs to rise up on your behalf. And He longs to fight on your behalf. And He longs to restore. He longs to restore you. He longs to take you to a new level. He longs to take you to a new dimension. Now we say to Him, Lord, rise up. Rise up, O God. Rise up, O God. Rise up and help us. Because we do not know the path of the wind. We do not know how the body is formed in a mother's womb. We cannot understand the work of God. But one thing we know. He's the maker of all things. And he rises up on our behalf. We know that he's rising up. Right now there is a shift in the spirit realm. About a certain situation or circumstance that you are going through. God has purpose to rise up on your behalf. God has purpose to turn it around for you. God has purpose to lift you to the higher dimensions. Because in the pathway of God, it is upward forward. There is no coming down. No matter what happens. It's upwards, forwards. You are sick, you are upwards, forward. You are in a situation, upwards, forwards. There are some things, certain things happening around you that don't please you, yourself, but it's upwards, forward. There is no coming back. There is no falling down. You rise up when you're still climbing. You rise up when you're climbing. You fall, yes, you can fall upward. You don't have to fall backwards. Backsliding is not your portion. You tell yourself, you know what? They are calling me for a drink, but I will drink my water in the name of Jesus. But don't take yourself to an altar. <laughs> and then you say, I'll just go and take that. I'll just go and take a soda. I'll just go and take water. You find yourself back to where you are. You cannot allow yourself to backslide. You need to keep to learn this verse. Of Psalm 44, 26. That when you find yourself in a difficult situation. You lift your voice. Rise up. Hallelujah. I can't wait to do that in a valley. In a place where. It's high place. I remember I did a prayer of Batlemayo in. Uh, in Nakuru. In a place. Naivasha Elementaita there. I went somewhere there into this prayer altar and then I went and, you know, made a cry to the Lord. Say, Son of David, have mercy on me. I was making that prayer. That was in February last year. I didn't know that God really had mercy on me and he did. He's a faithful God. I was just looking at the pattern of, you know, certain things and i want to tell you as long as you do not know the path of the wind and how the body is formed in a mother's womb you cannot understand the work of god the maker of all things 
Even if you go to a Bible school, you go to whichever seminary you go, you can never understand the work of God, the maker of all things. But one thing that we can know is that he rises up and rescues, he rises up and redeems, he rises up and lifts out in the name of Jesus. Look at this principle. He says, sow your seed in the morning and in the evening, let not your hands be idle. For you do not know which will succeed whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. Verse 7. Light is sweet, and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. However, many years a man may live. Let him enjoy them all, but let him remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. Be happy, young man, while you are young, and let your heart Give you joy in the year, days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eye sees. But know that for all these things, God will bring you to judgment. So then, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of your body for youth and vigor are meaningless. The underlying word here is banish anxiety. Banish anxiety for you from your heart with the knowledge that we do not understand how a body is formed in the womb of the mother. We do not understand how the path of the wind, wind highways, we don't see it. On your way to Marsabit, there is a place where it is written cross winds. Put a big sign on the road because the wind passes there. It's the path of the wind, but you cannot see. In fact, Looking at that wind, and it's in the east, I attribute it to the east wind of God. Because even cars are swept away there. And there was one, one man who everybody knew was an evil man. He was driving along, along that road. This man was associated with a lot of tribal clashes and all these things. People fighting each other, one tribe and another tribe. So as he was driving there, he's one of the religious leaders there. As he was driving this vehicle, someone suddenly opened the window. The vehicle was taken so many kilometers into the rocks and that's how the man was judged by the Lord. The wind, you don't know the path. The small wind that you see can rock an entire ship and cause it to even get to sink inside the the sea. That's the greatness of God. You need to see God. I, have you ever seen a whale? Huge, huge whale. It's like a 10 story building. If you are told you are to take the whale and put it up like this, that's the work of God. And it swims with majesty. The whale. Before you even marvel at that, you see the African elephant always walking in majesty. But it cannot stand before the lion. When you look at the lions, leave alone these ones you see in the zoo. The lions that are here in Africa. <laughs> leave alone the ones in South Africa and, uh, and Arabia where people pet them and they stay with them in their houses. The real lion in its majesty will show you how God created us to enjoy his work. And to remain in this safe place. Rise up, O oh God. Rescue us. Help us. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. We go now to the book of Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4, we are reading about the sin offering. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, when anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands. Verse number three. If the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people. You see that? The priest, when he sins, it's not only him, but he brings guilt on the people. He must bring a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull 
at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on its head and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and, bury, and carry it into the tent of meeting. He is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. The priest shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fragrance that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out to the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering and the fat that covers the inner parts or is, it, or is connected to them. Both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the covering of the liver which he will remove with his kidneys. With the kidneys. Just as the fat is removed from the ox sacrificed as a fellowship offering, then the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering. But the hide of the bull and all its flesh, as well as the head and the legs and the inner parts and offal, that is, all the rest of the bull he must take outside the camp to a place ceremonially clean, where the ashes are thrown and burnt it on wood fire on the ash heap. If the old Israelite community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though the community is unaware of the matter, they are guilty. When they become aware of the sin they committed, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to take some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting. He shall dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle it before the Lord seven times in front of the curtains. He is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar and do this with this bull just as he did it with the bull for the sin offering in this way the priest will make atonement for them and they will be forgiven then he shall take the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burnt the first bull this is the sin offering for the community when a leader sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the commands of the Lord, he is God, he is guilty. When he is made aware of the sin he committed, he must bring his offering of a male goat without defects. He is to lay his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. Is a sin offering. You see, this gives us the name, the scapegoat. In Leviticus 4.24, we see that when a man brings in a sin offering, it's a male goat, and he brings the male goat and lays his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord, it is a sin offering. So, what is referred to as a scapegoat, if you have heard about a scapegoat, is about, you know, you can hear, this person was not guilty, but he was arrested in, on behalf of so and so. So, that person is the scapegoat. So, this is a scapegoat. Verse number 25. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it on the thorns of the altar, the burnt offering. Pour the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall burn all of that fat 
and the altar and as he burned the fat of the fellowship offering in this way the priest will make an atonement for the man's sin and he will be forgiven if a member of the community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the lord's commands he is guilty when he is made aware of his sin he committed he must bring as his offering for sin a com he committed a female goat without defect is to lay hand on the head the female goat costs him something greater because when you slaughter a female goat you have slaughtered other goats that could have been born from it so it's a very expensive offering so he is to lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it in the place of the burnt offering then the priest is to take some of the blood with his finger and put it on the hands of the altar of the burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the fellowship offering and the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him and will be forgiven. If he brings a lamb as a sin offering, he is to bring a female without defect. He is to lay his hand on his head and slaughter it for a sin offering in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and he shall put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt sacrifice and the rest he shall pour out the rest on the base of the altar. He shall remove all the fat, just as the fat is removed from the lamb of the fellowship offering, and as the priest burn it on the altar, on top of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him for the sin he has committed, and he will be forgiven. Wow, beautiful. This is exactly what Jesus summarized for you. He summarized for me. For your sins, he took them upon himself. He was placed on that altar himself as the offering. And his blood flowed to the base of the altar in heaven. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, by that blood, we are free from sin. From that blood, we can say, rise up. Oh, hallelujah. We can say, rise up and help us. We can say, rise up, O oh Lord, and help us. Second Timothy, First Timothy, chapter 2. First Timothy 2. I urge them, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone for kings and those in authority that we may have peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness this is good and pleases god our savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth for there is one god and one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus that verse i don't want you to lose it because people are going to come and tell you mary intercedes for us on behalf of god to the son no they will say rastafari bob Marley did that and Selassie. they do this in the name of god then we are able to reach god that is all lies there is only one mediator. Are we together? Are we together? There is only one mediator. There is no Buddha who will come to intercede for you. There is no, uh, 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 you know, whatever other media you use. This scripture says it. There is one God. There are those who have claimed that we are worshipping three gods. God is thrice holy. Holy, holy, holy. He is almighty God. The I am is one God. There is one God. In Western Africa, there is a particular religion that came there and told the people, these white men, they are telling you to marry one wife and they worship three gods. 
We are telling you, we worship one God and marry four wives. So these people, many of them joined into that religion because they wanted the four wives and keep their polygamous nature. And then they thought now they'll be worshipping the true God. But there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. And this purpose, and for this purpose, I was appointed as a herald and an apostle. I'm telling you, that I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying. And a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. I want man everywhere, men everywhere, to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger and disputing. I also want women. Hmm? Listen, my sisters. I want women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls and expensive clothes. Again, consequently, I want to show you this in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. It says, your beauty should not come from an outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Your beauty should come from the word of God. It should not come in, hey, I cannot leave my house without wearing this, without wearing that apana. If you are going to church to show us what you are wearing, hey, you are missing it. Don't you notice I am wearing one of the latest designs? Don't you notice this is the most expensive chain I have? Do you know this bow tie is from where? Do you know her? Oh, this is prideful. You don't need this. As believers, the scripture of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 and the scripture of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 3 does not disqualify men as well. I also want men to dress modestly with decency and propriety. If you're coming to church wearing a baseball hat, looking at the back, what are you trying to tell us? What are, Do you really understand who you are worshipping? If you come like a rock star in church, you know, bouncing like a rock star, we see the flesh is at work. Mr. Flesh is working. The Bible tells us, rise up and help us, O oh Lord. Rescue us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Because if as a preacher, I will take to start policing how you dress. Mm -mm. That's not what I've been called to do. This is what I've been called to do. For this purpose, I was appointed as a herald and an apostle by telling the truth. As a teacher of the true faith in the name of Jesus. So, because we stand in that place, the reason why your pastor does not rebuke the way you are dressed is because he's not telling you the truth that if he tells you a rebuke, you will now say, uh -uh, I don't want this church, we are going to go. And that is a tithe that will leave. So, he might be quiet. He's seeing the women coming with their bodies exposed and everything. I say, ah! Sometimes I feel, oh my God, what am I seeing? I feel horrible when I see things like that. Horrible, completely horrible is the feeling. Before, even in my photography now, I don't entertain those kind of pictures. I don't feel, oh, oh. I feel, no, I don't want that one. Yes, it's work, but no, I don't want that one. Because at the end of the day, you must decide who rises up in your life. You must make a decision, beloved. You cannot continue to put your modesty and all what you have in the things that are outward, whereby inward there is nothing. But listen to verse 10. It says, but with good deeds. I want women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Listen, a woman should learn in quietness and in full submission. Why was this said to us? It was said to us because of 1 Peter 3, 4. 
which tells us that instead of your gold rings and all those things, instead of it, it should be that your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Your peace, your dreads, your what, they have no hakuna value kwa mungu kwa hiyo vitu. Kucha na mimi tuende korogosho. Ni kuonyeshe hiyo nywele ambayo mlinunua 70,000 ikite ikiwa kwa barabara imeanguka na wanashonelea watu wengine. Come let's go with you I show you. There is no value in these things. If you put your value in how your outward person will look in and instead not give your value to the inward and failing beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit gentle and quiet spirit and and fashion do not go together no they don't gentle and quiet spirit do not work in the same group they don't it's not possible because when you are adorned in those things your flesh is alive Myself, I like nice things. But I choose not to put my confidence and everything there. A gentle spirit, a quiet spirit, this is what we need to carry. And it will affect even how we talk. It will affect our ministry. It will affect what we are doing in church, how we are responding to situations. We will respond when we are broken. When we break before God, God longs to work with broken vessels. Brokenness is the direction to take. And the problem with a lot of the people who are asking, why should I wear this? Why should I wear this? It's because of lack of brokenness. Holiness gives us the power to witness for Christ. When we are walking in holiness, it will be easy to witness. Because if you are not walking in holiness, you look at somebody doing something, you know they are not born again, but you cannot witness to them because you feel yourself, you are tolerant to those things. You do not draw lessons from movies. You draw them from the word of God. Yes, movies may have intentions and may have good teachings, but movies will not take you to the kingdom of God. Because I show you and I show you again, the movie about Exodus, Moses stands at the edge of the Red Sea. And in that night, you hear the voice say, What do you have in your hand? And then Moses says a rod. And then he stretched out the rod right inside it like that. And immediately in the movie, the Red Sea parts. The Prince of Egypt, one of the cartoons that people are watching, it's a representation of the producer. It's not the word of God. You cannot base your faith on what people will produce. Redemptive Love, the movie. There are other movies that have been made. Pilgrim's Progress. Actually, I found it in one of my archives. I'm going to upload it on the 150 Days of Psalms. Uh, because I, it's, I don't want to get any copyright for it. So I hope that it will not be hit with a copyright strike. You will watch it there. Pilgrim's Progress, a very good movie to watch. Holiness gives us power to witness. The moment we have holiness, it will affect our spirit. Holiness is necessary because the Lord's return is drawing near. At any time from now, the trumpet may sound. Holiness is necessary before we can enter heaven. Because without holiness, no one can see God. We cannot. I watched another clip of people who are crying, running to church because they have been left behind. I pray for you, let you not have come all this way in the journey of 150 days of Psalms for you to be left behind. My desire is that you get the knowledge that will allow you to enter heaven because no sin can enter heaven. No pride, no jealousy, no envy, no impurity, no hatred, no bitterness can be tolerated in heaven. It is a holy place for holy set people. Satan was once a prince of God and suddenly he was cast away from heaven when pride entered into his heart. It was one sin he committed and got thrown down. Many Christians are sinning numberless sins on a daily basis today. When some people are told to live a holy life, they would simply reply, Leave me alone. Sipa ngwingwi, maisha ni yangu, wachana na yako. That's what they will say. I want to live my life my own way. That is what they will say. I don't want any pastor or anyone to guide me. 
A man who is yearning for freedom is like a train. Somebody who is yearning for such freedom is like a train saying, I am tired of passing between these rails year after year. The train wants liberty. And what will happen? It will crash. We should thus be holy so that God can use us. Men and women, great men and great women of God have been holy men. And let me tell you, God even has to, yani, ata kama yoruti na kuwa mrefu aje, lazma ata kuleta mahali kwa holiness. Eh. Where you even unfollow some pages you have been watching crap there. It's things that don't glorify God. Just remove yourself from there. You'll not miss anything. You will notice so. A daily consumption of news. If you're just watching news every day, news, 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 news. I have a lot of news anchor friends, but I'll, they even don't watch news. They read news, but they don't watch. Great men of God have been holy men. Men with a clean heart who are on fire for God 24-7. Not just in this broadcast. Even when we leave this broadcast, we are still on fire. As long as there is any root of sin in our heart, the Holy Ghost cannot have his way in us. And our usefulness is hindered. The minute you change your prayer point from praying, O oh Lord, give me power, and you change it to, O oh Lord, I will give up, give up every sin. I give up every sin. I give up every sin. That reason will change and power will come when you say, Rise up, O oh Lord. Oh, Rakayaba City. God will rise up. First Timothy chapter 2. I'm telling you, beloved, is a powerful place we find ourselves. In verse number 12, it says, I don't permit any woman to teach or have authority over man. She must be silent. This is in line to Ephesians number 5 verse 22. Wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. It does not mean that women should not speak in church. No, that is not the truth. You need to read everything in context. What this letter to Timothy is, is addressing a particular issue. Where Timothy was. And if you look at chapter 1. Is where you will see how the letter is set. It says now. It says in, in, in Timothy 1. It says Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus. At the command of God our Savior. And the Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy my true son in the faith. Grace, mercy and peace. From God the Father and Jesus our Lord. Now before you go start something. And start telling people. That women should not speak in church. Please don't forget to read for us the introduction of 1 Timothy chapter 1. Because this tells us who the letter is addressed to. It is not addressed to all of the body that now the body of Christ, all of you women should never talk in church. But there are some things we draw there that make sense for us, especially about the modesty. We want that. These are instructions on worship. When you come to church dressed in a jumpsuit, and in some of those places, the jumpsuit, there's no other clothes people wear inside, I am told. So you can imagine people naked in church coming to sing there. What spirit will be released? If at all there is a lustful spirit in anybody in the choir, this lustful spirit in this person goes attach itself to that one and now Jezebel with her demon, demonic powers they come into the church through that man, one person. Even it can be a pastor. Even a pastor can be attacked by lust. And let me tell you, lust is a dangerous spirit because you will not last. And you will be the last in the kingdom of God. Because if you understand what lust is, you will pray every day. Oh Lord, keep away covetousness from my eyes. Oh God, destroy the lust of my heart. This is the prayer you need to make constantly if you are on this earth. If you are on earth, then that's the prayer. You must pray against covetousness. 
You must pray against lust. Because these things, they are here with us. And witchcraft is one of the altars that has been constantly at war with the body of Jesus Christ. Even coming and dwelling and sits inside the church, that spirit of witchcraft, and causes people to be rebellious. If you have been in a worship team where you saw rebellion, maybe the choir leader says, let's come dressed in this dress, in this color. Then there's one person who says, ah, I can never wear color yellow. Uh -uh. Me, color yellow. Me, me si And they come dressed in another color and still insist to go in front. Now, the issue is not about the colors. The issue is not about the dresses. Because for me, if I was in a worship team, you tell me, come dressed in a, in a funny looking out way. I'll not come. Actually, I'll not just join you. I'll not join you. I'll not. I will not be. Oh, we are trying to reach the youth, so let's wear those funny trousers which are katika katika zimeraruka raruka to tembe to kionekana kama vijana. Nini mtaenda peke enyu. Mimi skuji. Kwa sababu, hiyo si rebellion. But what I'm saying is, where you see rebelliousness into, the, into that work, where there is rebellion, then just know there is witchcraft. And if witchcraft is available in a workplace, witchcraft is available in, the, in, in church, then there will be problem in worship. There will be no order. Now, listen, if I told the worship team, and I'll let me talk, allow me to talk to worshipers, worship leaders, the people wale mnaibanga pombele, kama wewe mwenyewe, auna time na mungu, whatever time you are going there in front of the people, is just going, now you are trying to, to access, because now you can hear the instruments, the instruments are nice, you can hear the drums are good, you are in charge, but you have only 10 minutes for that. And the preacher will wake up with the microphone after exactly 10 minutes and say, God bless you, we are now starting. Now you will feel, ah, this preacher always spoils for us worship. Who told you not to worship for three hours in your house? So that when you come to church, if you have 30 minutes for a service, you will not feel deprived of your worship. Because you already have time with God, more time. You invest time, my sister Afia. Invest the time in worship. So women should learn in quietness and in full submission was a command of the order of worship that Timothy was receiving. And it's the same up to now. There should be order in the house of the Lord. That does not change. Listen, verse 12. I don't permit a woman to teach and have authority over a man. She must be silent. That still holds. If the, man, the woman is married... She must not be able to be the one that is having authority over her husband. Yeah? You understand these things? These are the things that God has put in place. And a lot of marriages have been attacked by the Ahab spirit. The Ahab spirit says, What's that you are doing to you to another? Anataka. Iyo siyo ile njia mungu wa metengeneza. God has not made it so that women should rule over men. That is not of God. Woman, even if you are the one with the money, you must allow the man to be the head of the family. If you become the head of the family, one day you will lecture him and say, you, you don't do anything here. I've paid for the children. I go to this place. The moment you go there, pride has come in. Out goes the marriage. This is the reality that we are seeing here. Verse number 13. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But in this verse, I always like to show you that in Genesis 3 verse 1 to 6, that Adam was standing next to Eve. When the serpent was lying to her. When the serpent was there introducing the, 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 the sin to, to, to Eve, Adam was standing next. How do I know? Immediately she beat, she gave it to the man. Where did the man come? We don't see anywhere where it's written. And, Ad, and Eve looked for Adam and gave her the fruit. The man was standing next to her. So the sinful spirit of Ahab does not start just with Ahab himself. Even those days at the creation, Ahab was there in his spirit, causing Adam not to take his position, and the woman took the position. You see what happened? 
the fall of man. So this is why we are told these things. Verse 14. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean that giving birth gives you salvation? By no means. By no means. We move on to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Oh my God, it is such a joy to be able to flow like this. Today we'll be able to pray at the midday hour here in Kenya, Nairobi, and it's a joy. So we want to go now to the book of uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we worship you. We give you the praise. of your law. Open our eyes, O oh God. The Rora Bakayara Bayana. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. There is none like you. Oh, we honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Rise up, O oh Lord. Scatter your enemies. Oh, Father, we pray for the word of God in us to manifest. Oh, Lord, we sing. Oh, Rabbi, Yakara, Yabara, Vige, Bolo, Yada, Yimiki, Alaka, Satala, Bayara, Gada. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. Hey, rise up.
rise up. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 2. Glory be to Jesus. Rise up, O oh Lord. Ephesians chapter 2. That's where we are right now. Ephesians. It says, As for you, you are dead in transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us who lived among them at one time. Gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us up with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus. In order that, in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us, in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are a God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance to do. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth are called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision that is done in the body by the hands of men. Verse 12. Now, I want you to understand this one and put this in highlighter because I'm going to come back to it. It says, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners of the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who, were, you who once were far away have now have been brought together through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. For he came and preached peace. To you who are far away. And peace to those who were near. Verse 18. For through him. Oh, this words him. Just listen to them. For through him we have both access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you who are no, long, you are no longer foreigners and aliens. But fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built up together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 2, we see one thing, that God's word contradicts tradition. Because the tradition was the circumcision was telling the Ephesians people that you guys are not circumcised. We see a description of where we were before we knew Christ. I told you about verse 12. That we were in this place, we were excluded. We were no longer there. We were not even citizens. Eh? Listen. It says, remember that at one time, you were separate from Christ. Excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners. 
to the covenants of the promise without hope, without God in the world. That in this is an important scripture for us today, especially those of us who are brought up in traditional churches or in traditional settings. The scripture dispels and totally contradicts what many theologians teach. That certain promises are only for the Jews. I remember that, you know, this is something that you need to know. That this promise is not just for the Jews. In James chapter 5, says, Is any of you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and let him anoint over him with oil in the name of the Lord. It is not just for the Jews. According to Romans chapter 10 verse 12, God is rich toward all who call upon him. And there is no difference between, it, between the Jews and the Gentiles now in Christ. So contrary to religion and tradition and all preconceived ideas about God, don't forget Ecclesiastes 11.5. That tells you that as we do not know the path of the wind or how the, the, the child is born in the womb of a mother so we cannot understand the work of God. So this allows us to a place of just reverence to God. Reverence. We reverence you Lord. We don't know the path of the wind. We don't know how a body is formed in the womb. But we know you will rise up. You will rise up. You will rise up and help us. You will rise up, Lord, and help us. In the place where we are not walking in pride, we are walking in brokenness. That's the place that is contrary to religion and tradition and preconceived ideas about God and about Christians, and about preachers, and about money. I'm here to tell you, based on the authority of God's word, that Christians are to be financially prosperous. Poverty is not a hallmark of that you are working with God, and that you are suffering. No, you must know that there is a covenant in place. For we are a workmanship. When you look at Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God has created and prepared for us to walk in them. Wherefore we because of this remember. That being in the past Gentiles in the flesh. Who were called uncircumcision. By those who are called by circumcision. Which is made by the hands of men. That at that time you were without Christ. Eh? We were aliens. You are outsiders from the commonwealth. You are outside from the inheritance of Israel. But having no hope, having no God and the world. This is the picture of the person who does not know Jesus as his personal savior. You must know this thing, beloved. But today, as believers, we have been brought to these covenant promises. Notice that it says covenants of promise. That is a plural. God has several different covenants or contracts that he has put in with people from the Old Testament, cutting through one. He cut one with Abraham, naming him Abraham, and established covenants with men like Moses, Joshua, David, Psalms 89 verse 34. It says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. I'm here to tell you you will prosper. I'm here to tell you God wants you prosperous. Prosperous, you, 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 you. You must know it's time for him to rise up on your behalf. And for you to come to the knowledge that I want more. I want more of God. I want more. I want to spend more time, more time with you. More time. Ah, we must conclude. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Because we have an hour to pray right after this. May the Lord help us. He is rescuing us as well. Revelation 3. To the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These are the words 
of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the gold seven altars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Wake up! Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Verse 3. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. Verse number 5. He who overcomes will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life. But he will acknowledge, but will acknowledge him before my father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Verse 7. To the church, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have not kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that it is I who have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him a new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Verse 14. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen. Oh my God. This scripture here just gives me goosebumps when I speak it. Because in heaven, these are the titles of our Lord and Savior. These are the words of the Amen. The faithful and true witness. The ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds. That you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But do don't realize that you are wretched pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you cannot become rich, uh, so that you can become rich, and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve for your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be honest and repent. Verse 20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Beloved, 
We have come to the end of the six pack plus and we thank God for allowing us this far. We began with an altar call at the start and we want to make another one at the end. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I want to thank God for Melissa. Yesterday we were able to pray with her over the phone that she gave her life to Christ and we pray that she'll be able to stand in the ways of God. We also want to pray that you will receive salvation. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. Beloved, if you've prayed that prayer, I want you to write to us on the WhatsApp line and also you can be a blessing to, to the ministry through the same number and God will be a blessing to all of us as we do this. So we give glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen and amen. We give glory and honor and praise and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Shalom, shalom, shalom. See you in the prayer meeting. Kwaheri ni barikiweni.